and it is very shameful that you know uh, a farmer and then you're feeding your family with basically the worst uh, pot uh, potential food mm -hmm. so it did not sit very well on my on my heart that that's what I'm doing to my family so I decided to pursue organic farming and during that time cut sir sir mabalin nga what the day sound you get that but not value me clarity so mabalin nga day on camera nga ipakita mo inikat mo di mask mo ibig sabihin nag-start tayo nga safe nung ka po di acceptable distance one meter it's okay yeah okay. Ah, sige, ikat yun dito. So, pag tayo trolling ako manan, sir, and then, uh, mabaling kayo mag-converse nga kasla dito pa nag-ikat ti mask pa one meter. Basta iso na, ang uh, naka-ikat ti mask. Ah, no, for the safety. Pata, for a one meter ti distance, at least kasi. Iso ka yung requirement of discipline ko, kakapas training may discipline ko, papaguntan kami. <laughs> okay, tayo trolling, go. Okay, so, uh, um, so in the year 2000 when we started, it was really a gamble and I really didn't know exactly how to pursue organic because no, nobody was out to teach us. Mm -hmm. So since my background is in agriculture, so I was just counting on my uh, collegiate uh, training mm -hmm. and uh, books, that's what I, I invested on, organic books. So that's where oh, I got my foundation. So, I was not a good idea. Nobody was around to teach us. Even in the Department of Agriculture, when I approached them, they even returned the question to me. Ah. What is organic? <laughs> <laughs> so, apparently, that is a, a red flag that they are not aware of what uh, that industry or that part of agriculture is. So, uh, I really ran to books. Now, the problem with books, every author has a technique. They have all different styles and techniques. And, uh, some work for us, you know, most of these authors are in temperate regions, they, you know, four seasons. And we are in the tropical, two seasons, and things are plainly different, no? So you have to see which one will work and which one doesn't. So after reading so many books and reading a lot of articles, and uh, trying all of these things, you know. Uh, slowly we filtered out what will work. Mm -hmm. And then we uh, got to know which ones really are practical. That one will, you know, mm -hmm. there are so many things, things that will work, but what is practical and what will make farm the farm, what will be advantages rather mm -hmm. to the farmer? Mm -hmm. Because my heart is that for a farmer. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we, I studied things not to make money but to assist farmers. So that's exactly the, the, the what you call this, my objective when I was trying to learn about practical organic farming. So in that process, man, when I was already confident that we got the techniques properly done already or made, mm -hmm. We decided to teach because nobody was was uh, in that boat, no? It was fairly new ground. Nobody was, was into it, so sabi ko, turo tayo because you know, it's, the industry will not grow if nobody will teach or we will not assist those who are into it now. But their, their techniques are slow. They are not... Uh, they really don't know what parameters they have to watch for to be able to improve their productivity. So these are the things that uh, was very important. So in 2004, we started to teach. Ah, 2004. Yes. But, but it's on your own, sir? Yes, nobody is. Nobody will find this <laughs> except you. It's your belief and your conviction now mm -hmm. that uh, you want to help. So, tell me, if I'm going to teach, I have to set up this place in such a way that, you know, it will be convenient, not only for myself, but also for those who will learn. So, we have to set it up in such a way that there, it is sectionalized. So, as you have seen in our layout, there's an area for production of fertilizer, where, where, where we plant our seeds, where we, we pack and uh, do packing, we have a nursery section and the grow out. And we also built a lecture area, so everything is convenient, not only for myself, but also those who are. So 
these things, well, it's a little bit, uh, take some investment mm -hmm. and some vision that, you know, you will have to uh, invest on. And uh, hopefully, the, our vision then was not really to make money, but to help farmers. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, well, me and my wife, when we were discussing the investment, because this, Structures are not cheap. Mm -hmm. You invested yeah. it with your own money, sir? Yeah, of course. Ah, no you, didn't, you didn't get any grant or... No, no well, or... they don't even know what organic <laughs> is, so how will they find something that they don't understand? So we really had to do it on our own. And besides, you know, if you... you umasa ka dun sa mga ganun, grants and funds yes. and uh, whatever, it takes time eh. Mm. So, you present it now, you may get your funding to one, two years Wait. from now. Uh -huh. So, you just lost two years of your life waiting. Wait. So, might as well, when we decided to pursue it, it was on our own. So, we do it. We did it slowly. We did really a lot of thinking as to how to go about it. So, it will be uh, uh, not so expensive, mm -hmm. at the same practical, at the same time, it is a workable design. Yes. So that's the that's the one. Eh? That's the reason why we pursued it. And if it's going to be in your pocket, you really will stretch your own peso. You'll just not be spending like crazy. You know? So that's what happened. <coughs> so 2004 we started to teach, and then uh, well we had very few uh, souls who wanted who really enrolled, but we just continued pursuing it. And then there was a support from the Department of Agriculture, the local uh, municipal agriculture is uh, gathered together all the organic farmers in the municipality, the Trinidad. I was included and then there they, they encouraged us to make a cooperative mm -hmm. and that was LATAP, La Trinidad ah. Organic Multipurpose Organic uh, Multipurpose Cooperative. This was established when, sir? Um, 2005. Uh, so, so you pioneered this? Uh, yes. Yes. I was the first, uh, what do you call this? Interim uh, chairman. And then I was also the first uh, chairman of the cooperative when it was registered. So we will. It was a big struggle, it was an uphill climb and we had so many birth pains and growing <laughs> challenges. So, you know, but we per persevered with the help of the uh, members who were also as dedicated to this uh, form of uh, production. So, uh, it grew, it grew, it grew, it grew very fast actually. And, uh, after five years, I think our Latap has, you know, has reached even as far as Mindanao oh. as the first uh, organic cooperative mm -hmm. in uh, in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Functioning, uh, the, you know. But did deliver na rin kayo nun, sir, for, uh, for but, that, that far? No, no, no. Uh, or the organization itself? The which? organization was a model already uh -huh, okay. for upcoming uh, cooperatives, organic cooperatives mm -hmm. in the different uh, uh, areas, uh, regions in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So it, we became more or less parang a template ah, of nice. a, of a like organic uh, cooperative. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started. And then the cooperative was not only supported by Kwan, by the Department of Agriculture, we were able of we were noticed also by different uh, NGOs mm -hmm. like, uh, who gave grants mm -hmm. so uh, we were the beneficiary of different grants from USAID to OSAID oh. and all this nice. so uh, lumaki na lumaki talaga yung mm -hmm. so that's how uh, why? So right now, sir, kumusta yung cooperative? Frankly, I detached myself from the cooperative about nine years ago. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't want it, first and foremost, to be dependent on a person lang. Mm -hmm. So they have to grow on their own. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, uh, 
I said, uh, you know, when our organization is growing, mm -hmm. uh, there are conflicts in ideas. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's about uh, normal. Mm -hmm. So uh, since uh, I, I think I've done my job to make that cooperative grow mm -hmm. and it has set foot, it's, uh, it's really standing on its own and really, you know, off the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, sir. I gave them a chance to I let go already. Uh -huh. So they, you know, let them stretch their imagination yes. <laughs> and there's their can also to raise the level of uh, <coughs> the cooperative yes, to the next. Mm -hmm. So yun yung part. But uh, I don't really know if uh, they have gotten farther than ah, what we have reached okay. then. Mm -hmm. So. They got into they get to supply na other like supermarkets. And they did that. We did that during my time. Uh -huh. we, we we went to SM. Mm -hmm. When I was still active, we pursued SM. We even got as far as Manila. Mm -hmm. But uh, we had challenges as far as uh, delivering to those areas. Uh, delivering is easy, but the collection is the hard part. Oh, okay. Uh, the supply is enough. And uh, the supply is there, mm -hmm. but getting paid. Ah, okay. The so collection that's part was the, uh, the, the that's the worst that. part, you know. You know, our farmers, the cooperative, cooperative members, they need the cash, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Their operations are not very big. Mm -hmm. And the people where we supply the vegetables do not understand this. Mm -hmm. So they delayed and delayed and delayed the the payment. So it became very hard for us to sustain. It. So we just came back here, and then when that was well, since we were getting to be known also in the in Manila markets, uh, some traders uh, contacted the cooper the cooperative and dealt with us directly. Uh, so he, with this kind of relationship, pas maganda, easier. Yeah, they order, we send it, we get paid. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that, and we didn't have to wait, you know. You know, the, the you know, supplying supermarkets was not really, it's not a good venue for small Enterprise. <laughs> enterprises. So that's how things work. So as a learning site, naman, we started nga as a 2004 to teach, and then uh, in the cooperative life, that were the one we my training became the foundation of the knowledge of most of the members when uh, proficient na rin yung mga farmers after six seven years they were capable of teaching na hindi na rin ako i let go that aspect na do you um, ask for tuition fee sir in case na yung yung start ng do you charge? Oh yeah, you know, they, ha they have to value what they learn. Yes. No. Yes, so kapag libre libre, wala. Ang iniisip nila, ano kaya merienda, ano kaya lunch. Iniisip nila. Pero kapag nagbayad sila, oh ano, anong anong binayad? Ano yung matututunan ko dito? That's what they seek for. So when I when I I started, I was charging. Uh, 1,000 pesos per person per day. Per day. Yung charge. So my basic training was two days. Two, three days. And then we developed a five day and then a 14 day. Ooh. So, yeah, there was, uh, there was a need. Kasi yung two days was really crap. You know, it just, it's just lecture demo. That's it. Tapos yung five days, there was more uh, interaction. Tapos yung 14 days, talagang hands-on. Immersion talaga from uh, seed sowing to marketing. So, uh, but, but the fee was something like that. It's 1,000 per person per day. So, you know, it simplifies everything. And standardizes also everything. So when you started teaching like that, do, did they ask you for any certifications or ano, uh, qualifications na obviously, pwede bang mag-go? 
nobody had a template to teach organic oh, not even okay. the university cities mm -hmm. did so uh, they had no basis mm -hmm. so during that so, time so I just had uh, it was just an advocacy and uh, mm -hmm. but I cannot give it for free because yes. you know the value yeah, they, they have to value it. Experience, yes. You know, uh, I even went as far as the United States to see mm -hmm. how our practice compares to them. Mm -hmm. My goodness, our practice is five star. <laughs> and we're far more Hi. efficient. We're far better off in mm -hmm. doing things than how they did it there. I tell you, I've seen so many organic farms. I want <laughs> well, I can convert, I can teach you how to convert your farm mm -hmm. into premium mm -hmm. in less than one year. Ooh. So that it will take three to five years. Oh my goodness, mm -hmm. the, the farmers would have uh, lost you know, yes. hope in gardening if that's how it's going to take. Sir, about that, uh, the conversion thing, the same, some farmers are uh, telling me that you need to clear the soil first, something like that. If they've been into conventional farming, and how many years uh, or how long does it really take to return it to its natural? No, there are two things that you have to look into as far as uh, that is concerned. Mm -hmm. There is a concern for safety, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So safety from poison. Mm -hmm. There are two ways to poison. One is to poison uh, toxic chemicals which is ingested, which is affecting mm -hmm. our bodies mm -hmm. and all that's one. And the other is the poison of the soil. Mm -hmm. So which ones do we want to tackle first? Let's talk about the soil. The soil. Okay. The soil, uh, the poisons that reach the soil are normally neutralized mm -hmm. by uh, chemical reaction. Because the soil has so many uh, compounds, mm -hmm. elements mm -hmm. that react with the chemical. Mm -hmm. So in, if you, if you, let's say, uh, six weeks, mm -hmm. two months, neutralizing ah. the poisons are gone. It's, it doesn't take years. Though. It doesn't take years oh, unless okay. you know it's DDT. DDT, DDT is a uh, is a quinaman. That's a insecticide mm -hmm. that has a very long uh, life on mm -hmm. the ground. It, mm -hmm. 75 years, and oh. then oh. So that's why it was banned. They were banned by those who are, but if you're, your back is turned, the, the farmers are using it. Mm -hmm. but anyway, that's Do something bad. So, Filipinas, do they use it? In Mindanao. Oh. And sometimes they, you know, there was a test for sugar export. Mm -hmm. They tested the sugar for. Muscovado yata yun eh, to be brought abroad. When they tested for pesticide, the mabas DDT. When did they apply DDT? Right after the war. Oh, and it's still... It's still there. That's, that's the sad part about it. So if you use it, you cannot remove it for the next maybe 75, eh, maybe it's a century before it's neutralized. But everything else, all the other chemicals, right, will more or less be you know, neutralized in six, six weeks to two months. Oh, that's nice. Now, the hard part is the poisoning of the soil by the uh, chemicals. Mm -hmm. Now, the chemicals, is a... That's from the spray, no, sir? No, 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 it's the fertilizer. Ah, okay. Because how, do, how does the fertilizer destroy the soil? Because when you put these chemicals, you do not put anything else, you mm -hmm. know? Like, uh, uh, what happens is uh, the soils become depletes in mm -hmm. its uh, natural state. Everything else gets uh, consumed by the plants that you grow. Before you know it, uh, the, the soil is half dead already. Mm -hmm. So resuscitating that is the objective now. Mm -hmm. So that's the there, that's a challenge. So if you are going to poison or kill your soil, you know, it's really a short time time, eh? but 10 years, mm -hmm. you don't really care. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if, when your soil is half dead, mm -hmm. 
you you are forced to use a lot of chemicals. Mm. That's why if you look into the last uh, soils of farmers here in Halsema, no? mm -hmm. they spray every week, mm -hmm. sometimes three times a week, sometimes two times a week. Mm -hmm. Why? That's the only way they can protect the plants from getting when, eh? from getting attacked by by you know pathogens or insects or whatever uh, potential problem no? mm -hmm. mainly because their plants are very weak or is it when you're weak kahit na malayo yung humatching na may sipon eh it's the same thing for plants when you're you're growing things in dead soil half dead soil they are very weak so they spray 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 mm -hmm. you know? So that's the that's what's happening now. So they are trying to intervene with so many uh, techniques, mm -hmm. but you know, there's nothing like going back to basics. Yes, sir. So every time they pursue a certain technique, it has a price, mm -hmm. and it's not cheap, mm -hmm. and you're not even sure if it will work. Mm -hmm. You're spending for something that. Topis lang. Mm -hmm. And then when you do it, you've spent for it, you're not happy with it. Mm -hmm. That's where their money is going. So when when you pursue organic and go back to basics, mm -hmm. <coughs> you resuscitate the soil, you come up with healthier plants, mm -hmm. your healthier plants are, are resisting problems, mm -hmm. pesticide wise, pest wise. Mm -hmm. so you have less cost of operation. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. Uh -huh. So, it starts from the soil. Yes, when you have your you have a healthy lifestyle as a person, you have a light, healthy lifestyle. You have a good diet. You exercise. You sleep well. No COVID will come near you. No symptomatic It will not affect you at all. But if your system is weak. Even if you're young, which is what we're experiencing now, you will die. Yes. Based on food consumption, then you know what yeah, The food that they're eating is processed. Not only that, they're empty food. You think if you're eating vegetables, let's say, that came from half dead soil, there is dead nutrients there. <laughs> That's what that's what you're paying for in organic uh, produce, mm -hmm. organic products that are real, ah. Because I mean, the tag na organic, organic zila na mandamat amo how to make it really uh, what it is, no? But if you, that's what you pay for, it's the minerals and the value that is inside mm -hmm. the product that's going to help you yeah. get stronger. Sir, yesterday I went to Ati. Yeah. Today Ati, nagtanong na rin po kasi ako doon. Now about the organic farming, sabi nila, LATAP uh, registered as a group. Mm -hmm. uh, kasi mahal daw po yung... Uh, ah, for certification. Oh, yes, yes. Yes. Uh -huh. That's very true. May idea po kayo. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I am the first certified organic uh, farm mm -hmm. in the Cordillera. Mm -hmm. I pursued this in 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, I applied in May. I was inspected in September yata, or August. Mm -hmm. I was given the go signal to claim my products as organic in November. Mm -hmm. So, because everything that they place in their guidelines as organic was already present. Oh, nice. So I was the first and one of the fastest to be certified mm -hmm. organic here in Nikwan. And the thing is, it's not cheap. <laughs> oh, how much? Oh, sorry, that's what they told me. It's not cheap, okay, you know. It's, uh, there are two certifying bodies now. There's the uh, Opta and the other one is NICERT, I think. I don't know if NICERT's uh, uh, 